Hello everyone, this is Jackie with Jack's Creative Inspirations here on YouTube and on Facebook. And on Instagram, I go by the handle at Scrap and Jacks. Welcome to my channel about cross stitching and diamond painting and other forms of crafting that I, you know, might try to do once in a while, but mainly cross stitching and diamond painting. Today is Thursday, November the 9th. 2023 and it has been six months since I've been here. I am so very sorry about that. Lots of things have been happening. The last time we had visited, I had just come home from Stitching in the Wild in Fort Lauderdale with Garon Stitchery. Had a phenomenal retreat. Um, and then I was getting ready to go to StitchCon in Cincinnati, Ohio. I did go to StitchCon. I did go to weekend day. Um, I got there Wednesday, spent Wednesday evening with Gary, Ronnie, and other friends uh, from the Garon Stitching page that we'd all attended Stitching in the Wild together. Um, and then, um, you know, we had dinner. The next morning, StitchCon opened. Um, so, got in the room and all the things. My roommate arrived later in the day. Um, so this was Thursday afternoon. So I started kind of having this cough in the evening time and it was more like a, I'm, you know, a tickle in the back of my throat, something's irritating my throat kind of cough. Um, woke up Friday. It was the same, no big anything. Um, just this cough. And then, uh, Friday night went to bed and overnight Friday night into Saturday morning, my blood glucose monitor kept alarming. Your blood sugar's low. Your blood sugar's low. And I'd wake up and I'd look at the alarm and, oh, it's fine. I'm fine. And go back to sleep. So Saturday morning when I woke up, my the back of my throat and the roof of my mouth were tingling like I was trying to come down with a cold. And StitchCon is kind of known sometimes for being a bit of a super spreader because people would go and either not know they had COVID or went knowing they had COVID and, and still went to the event and infected other people. So I woke up the roommate and I said, we need to go to the grocery store. I got to get a, some cough medicine. So we went to the grocery store and I got, I was reaching for the day quill on the shelf and the shelf below it had COVID home tests. And I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. I know it's not COVID. I'm going to go ahead and do this just to make everybody feel at ease. And then we're going to go back to the convention center and go back to stitching. I got back out in the car, literally swabbed the snot out of my nose and waited. And it took 15 minutes to get back to the convention center from the grocery store. And we were a few blocks from the convention center when the line faintly turned pink. And I wanted to cry. All day Thursday, all day Friday, I'd been hugging people. I'm a hugger. Um, you know, I just couldn't believe it. It was a very faint pink line. But pregnancy tests, Amnesure, and COVID tests, a faint pink line, you're positive. It's positive. Um, so I got out of the car and told Steph, uh, Pam and Steph, just keep stitching. I told Steph, I just tested positive for COVID. She said, do your table mates know? And I'm like, no, you're the third person to find out. So I said, I'm going to get my stuff and I'm going back to the room. And um, so I went into the convention center and I'm going downstairs and I meet Barbara Hills, the owner of Keepsakes. And I told her, I said, I just tested positive for COVID. She said, do your table mates know? I said, you're the fourth person to find out. So I went in to the, to, the, to the ballroom and I was loading up my stuff and my table mates were like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I told them and I, they were very shocked and they were like, no, you don't have it. You haven't even coughed or sniffled or anything. And I'm like, no, I've been coughing since Thursday evening. So I gathered up my things. My roommate had decided she lives in Indiana. So she was going to go back home that night after everything closed up. And um, so she she went up to the room and 
got all her stuff out of the room while I'm gathering up all my stuff in the ballroom to go back up to my room and quarantine. And, um, I, you know, it was, it was surreal. Um, uh, found, um, found urgent care that actually came to the hotel and checked me out, did another COVID test. Again, it was very faintly positive, more than likely because I'd had three rounds of the vaccine and I had COVID last September. So I've got quite a bit of immunity, but, um, the nurse practitioner looked me over and she, I said, I've got to fly home tomorrow. I said, I can't, I don't, af I can't afford and I don't have time to stay here in quarantine and I don't have the money or the energy to drive myself, rent a car and drive myself for three days to get back to Seattle. And she says, oh no, you can fly. You can fly. Just make sure you stay masked and kind of stay to yourself. And yeah, that would have been nice if both of the planes, like my flight from Cincinnati, well, Covington, Kentucky, from Covington to Chicago and then Chicago to SeaTac were not completely booked and completely sold out. And on the Chicago SeaTac leg of my trip, I'm sitting up in the front so I can get up and use the restroom more easily and the flight's booked. <laughs> in fact, I think they were overbooked. Um, and so I'm sitting there and I'm on the aisle, the very front seat. And there's a gentleman sitting by the window. And this dude walks in. And he's big dude. He's like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, he's a big dude. And I think our seat was the only seat left. And he squeezed himself into the seat. And he's sitting there. And he's chatting with the guy at the window. Because I'm reading my book with my mask on. And, and <laughs> then the longer the flight went, the sleepier this guy got. And he starts to lean. He starts to doze. He starts to do this and then he starts to do this and he's laying over on top of me and I have my book and I'm laying over into the aisle trying to read my book and stay away from him. And I'm like, I, the thought crossed my mind about five times. Should I tell him I tested positive for COVID? And I thought, no, a riot at six, at 36,000 feet. No, that's not what I want. So I kept my mouth shut and kind of, you know, shouldered him back <laughs> up into his seat. But so yes, that was StitchCon. Um, I had a great time. Uh, I met, I got to meet Carrie Tiger Lily. I got to meet um, Shelly and Liz, the antique needle workers. I got to meet Angie, little house stitch, uh, tiny house, tiny house stitcher, I think. Um, where are you, girl? We missed you. <laughs> I got to meet Liz Matthews. Um, I got to meet Abby Topknot. Pam and Steph, Barb, um, oh my goodness, I saw, um, oh, now I'm dead at Chrissy, finally a farm girl. Of course, I start to speak and my nose starts to run. So, I had a wonderful time. I can now rest easy saying I did it, I lived it, I experienced it, um, I am not going to go next year. I've already made my decision. I am currently signed up to do five retreats. Well, signed up officially to do one, two, three, four of them. The fifth one, registration will open next spring. Um, in April, I'm going to be doing the spring edition of Stitch West from um, Kefren and Debbie. Um, Snug Harbor Crafts, I met them. Maverick was with them. Um, so I met them. Um, I met Kefren and Debbie, <clears throat> but I'll be doing Snug, I'll be doing uh, Stitch West. A week later, I pr probably, might, probably will be pulling back into Seattle in time to jump on an airplane and fly to Maine for the Library Stitchers Retreat in April. That is with Missy and Kathy of Two Needles Pulling Thread, um, Belinda, and I'm wanting to say Emily, B&D Stitchery. Oh gosh, I hope I have the name right. I am so sorry if I don't. Um, and then, um, so I'll be doing that retreat. So I'll be doing those two retreats back to back in April. In July, I'm supposed to go to Orlando for Stitch Florida 
I don't know. I may pull out of that one and I'm hoping I'll be able to get my money back. I'm not sure. Um, and then um, in September, I will be going to Alabama for Stitching in the Wild 2024 with Gear on Stitchery. I will be attending Weekend 1. Um, if you're in Alabama and you're going to Weekend 2, Floss Boss and Cousins, come see me! <laughs> Um, at that same time, Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit with Acorns and Threads in Portland, Oregon will be having their retreat on that same weekend. And so I'm going to do the Zoom portion of that retreat because they've already announced that the guest designers for Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit are Teresa Koga and Beth Twist of Heartstring Samplery. So next year is going to be full. And to top all of that off, I have made a decision several months ago to try to do 24 and 24. Well, my 24 in 2024 will be 24 new starts. And to that end, I have been going through and trying to get organized all of my projects, my kitted projects, my whips, my charts, all my floss. That up there is all of my Be Stitch Me floss, my Be Stitch Me silks. On the other side is all of the DMC that I have on um, uh, floss drops. I also have DMC in kits. I have got overdyes in kits. I have got a, an almost entire collection of Forbidden Fiber Company flosses because I've been with Leanne and I got to meet her at StitchCon too. Um, I've got, I've been with her floss um, just flossing club since she opened it in 2021. Or maybe it was 2020. I'll have to look at my Instagram. <laughs> anyway, so I've been doing a lot of thinking about, um, about you know, purchases and what I've got and Sable stitching. And Sable is stash acquisition beyond life expectancy. Um, I've been looking at all of that, looking at my little apartment and realizing that I really need to either work on this stuff or it needs to find new homes and I'd really like to try to work on it so um, my whips I have I don't even have 20 whips I do have whips a lot of them are old whips that I'd started back in late 90s early 2000s I stopped cross stitching in 20 2004 I had stopped cross stitching and I picked it back up again in 2019, right before the onset of the pandemic. So I have gotten, at my last look, I had gotten, I had now have, I'm wanting to say almost 200 kitted projects. And I have got, you know, so they're kitted in that I've got floss and fabric, or I've got the floss, or I've got the fabric, and the DMC's floating around here. So for all intents and purposes, they are kitted. So what we're going to do tonight is that I'm going to do, first off, this video is going to be a whip parade. I'm going to show the 20 whip, or the less than 20 whips that I have currently going. And then I will stop all that, stop the camera. And while that's all uploading, I'll rearrange everything. And then I'm going to go through the kitted uh, projects that I have. That video, I'm hoping I'll be able to get it done in one shot and then just one video put up. Um, and then a third video where I will actually show my 24 and 24 and discuss my plans for doing 24 new starts in 2024. At this time, I'm thinking about making it 25 finishes in 2025. <laughs> I believe me, there'll be a lot of them. Okay. So, oh, the rest of my story in September, or was it October? No, it was October. I'm sorry, October. October, I got to go to Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit in Portland, Oregon with my local stitching bestie, Marsha. And we had 
two awesome days of stitching and meeting up with people. I got to meet Aaron, the two martini stitcher. I got to meet Jody Trixie Tricycle. I got to meet Michelle Bendy face to face. Um, uh, who has been Michelle, who is Bendy stitchy. Um, Jody Rice of Satsuma Street was one of the featured designers and Tracy Horner of Ink Circles was the other one. So I got to meet those two ladies as well. Uh, spent the weekend with Anna, Stitch Rody, Audrey, Stitchy Witch, um, and a lot of other people. Just had the most fun. So that's it. I've been a homebody ever since and working on getting rid of stuff and working on uh, my projects for 2024. But for now, let's look at some whips. Before I start, I want to warn you, you will hear zipping and unzipping. You will hear Velcros, Velcroing and unvelcroing. You will hear tags and all sorts of lovelies banging and rattling around. I'm sorry. I just simply cannot pull everything out and then just let it go. I have to try to keep everything straightened up as much as possible. I will do my best to remember to tell you what the fabrics are, the flosses are, where the bags came from, the pattern, where it's from. I will do my best. If I miss something or if you didn't catch it, please don't hesitate to leave a comment, ask a question, and I'm happy to give you the information. All right, here we go. So this bag um, was in a mystery box from um, Be Stitch Me. Um, so, and in here is a chart from Liz Matthews called Old Friends. Your heart and my heart are very old friends. Um, I'm sorry I didn't think to grab out the original chart. I did not copy the cover photo. I only made a working copy of the chart itself. This is a very sad start, but there's the why. Um, this is fabric from, for, no, Seraphim Fabrics, Serafina. It's a 16 count Ada, and I am using DMC 310. Um, yes, DMC 310. All right. Number two, this is an old, and this is again, another uh, mystery box from Be Stitch Me. I have to hide this from my roommate because she loves chickens. Chickens! Chickens! <laughs> okay. This is an old, old whip. I started this back um, in 2005, 2006. I was actually foolish and foolhardy enough that I... Oh, no. I, I was cross-stitching in 2005, 2006. Um... I think it was shortly after that that I put it away and didn't touch it again until 2019. Um, but this was from The Cross Stitcher, um, October 2006, and it is Thanksgiving Gobbler. He is 3D, so it's his head, his waddle, his body, the, the tail feathers, and the legs and the feet. And this is stitched on, I'm wanting to say 11 count monk's cloth using called for DMCs. And I started working on his leg. Yeah, there's my crosses. So I'd started working on his leg. Okay. All right, number two. Number three, again. This is the Ocean Epic Mystery Box from Be Stitch Me. She did this last summer. I received this box shortly before um, the events in my family. Um, 
September 2nd last year, my nephew, while under the influence of um, substances, um, thought he had taken one thing, apparently had been giving some, given something else, and he hallucinated and murdered his daughter. And two weeks later, he took his own life. Um, so I took this with me to Missouri to help my niece, um, you know, the memorial service for my great niece and, and helping her um, finish up uh, my nephew's things. Um, so I took this with me and I took two other charts as well. Um, this is the, the sun so bright, sky is sky is shining sand so soft sea is calm water so blue let the ocean take me and i put one length of floss in it so i got the is in the middle the fabric is from be stitch me it was all in the mystery box and it's using the called for dmc All right, number three. Number four, this is a Garon Stitchery, Garon Totten Bags bag. Um, I purchased this one because it's a 12 by 18. I normally get the 12 by 13 in the bag of the month club. And in here is One Nation. And I know you've seen a lot of people working on this chart. I'll try not to show you. One Nation. Um, the stars are Quaker motifs, and then the stripes, the red and white stripes, are the states as they entered the Union. My goal ultimately is to put Washington and Missouri in gold, uh, yellow etoile. Um, Missouri is the state of my birth, and Washington is my adopted home state. Um, I've been going through using Jen Lee of Quirks and Stitches, using her formula to determine the size of a project. And I thought I only had one BAP, which is a big ass project. No, I think I now, the last count I have four or five. <laughs> anyway, so this is my start on One Nation. I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put it on scroll rods. But that's my start. Yes, there's hanging threads. Yes, there are pins in there. Yes, there is a needle. I sewed linen around the edges just to make sure that it was going to, to fit or, you know, be on the scroll rods and I could get to the stitching area. This is a 20 count Ada Proserpina from Be Stitch Me. Uh, let me verify that. Sorry. Yeah. Nope. Under the sea. Under the sea fabrics. Proserpina. And to make sure it was going to fit on the fabric, I only gave myself a one inch margin. And I will let the framer deal with the rest of it. So, number, that was number four. Number five is another old one. Growing up in St. Joseph, Missouri, my baby brother, um, went to a high school that the mascot was a shamrock um, or leprechaun there. They were called themselves the Fighting Irish. So I'm about to show you a chart, and I honestly don't, you know, good luck. Good luck getting anything out of that. But it is the Good Luck Bear. Um, he's green with a shamrock in his belly. And... There we are. I need to go through some of these and figure out their sizes and all that. Okay. This is number five. Number six, this is the second of three patterns that I took with me to work on when I was in Missouri. This was a advent box, Halloween advent box from Forbidden Fiber Company, and it's called Witches Ride. When witches go riding and black cats are seen, the moon laughs and whispers, tis near Halloween. 
Um, it's a black and white photo because it was an advent box and Leanne didn't want your, you to know, you know, the whole color scheme and everything until the end. I will see if I can find a black or a color photo of it and um, try and insert it. So my one strand of floss, this is all Forbidden Fiber Company fabric, Forbidden Fiber Company flosses. I started the bottom of the window, the windowsill where the owl is sitting on the branch of the tree and the moon is shining. And that's the needle minder from Forbidden Fiber Company. It says, I put a spell on you. Okay. Most of these uh, kits from Forbidden Fiber Company you can find on their website, forbiddenfiberco.com. Um, Leanne still has quite a bit of them uh, on there. This is another project from Forbidden Fiber Company, and I'm so sorry I left it in the Q-Snap. Um, here, let me see if I can get it out. I will chat. So my plan for the, the 24 and 24 is two new starts a month. Um, the first 10 days of the month, I will do new start number one. The second, new, the, second the, the 11th through the 20th, will be the second new start of the month. And then the 21st through the 29th, 30th or 31st will be a whip. And my whole hope, plan, belief is that I will have it all, I will have quite a bit done. I'm going to do an equal mix of big ass projects and teeny projects so that I'm not gonna burn myself out um, either cranking out a bunch of really simple ones or getting bogged down on a really big project. And I yet haven't really yet, I, I don't know yet what the toll, the whole, um, I'm not going to be like Pam of, uh, just keep stitching she sat down and actually figured out, okay, on this date, I'm going to start this one. On that date, I'm going to start that one. I'm not even going to go there. I'm, I'm just going to start the first of the month. I work three nights a week. So basically, I lose four days a week with sleeping and working. And my whole goal is to have my spot set up by the end of December so that I can come home from work, put up my feet, and stitch and decompress for an hour while my medicine, you know, I take my morning medicine and everything kicks in so I can get some sleep. And so that is my whole goal is to start doing this. So this is Harvest Blessings. And I'll get you the cover photo. Yep. All right, hang on here a minute. Yeah, there he is. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, come on. Bless you. Thank you. Okay. That is Harvest Blessings. And this is what I have done. I have the sunflower and the harvest. I've started in on the crow. And, um... What I want to do with this one is it would be an excellent one for fill-in work for retreats. So I'm going to try and get um, uh, the pumpkin outlined and the rest of the crow outlined. And so then next year, this will be my traveling piece where I can just get huge chunks of blocks of color done. This is, in case I didn't say it earlier, and I know now I didn't, this is a Garon Stitchery Bag of the Month. Halloween gnomes. No, sorry, Thanksgiving gnomes. This was a bag of the month. Okay, five, six, I think. Number seven. And bags from Yarn Tree from uh, One Two Three Stitch. This is a Sue Hillis. 
Wyman fish. And she has a little charm that she holds. It's a sea, a sea um, starfish. I originally had started this this spring to do as my small uh, for Garon Stitchery Stitching in the Wild. Unfortunately, it just did not work out. I honestly don't know that I'll do any smalls this coming year. I just I get so stressed out about it that I just, you know. This is a piece of scrap Ada that I had in my collection. I was... Um, I do a lot of shopping at thrift stores and get Ada fabric from there to, I want to try and play with dyeing my own fabrics and I want to, I don't want to do it on a piece of fabric that I've spent 30 or $40 on. So, but this is her. So, anyway. So that is Wyman Fish, and I'm doing this with the Call for DMC. I am going to, her eyes and mouth are French knots. I don't mind doing French knots. I truly don't. I used to do a lot of candle wicking um, in the um, 90s, and so I, no, excuse me, back in the 80s. This was my first time in college. I did a lot of candle wicking. So I do not mind doing French knots at all, but I did get um, some Mill Hill seed beads to do her eyes and her mouth with. So, all right. And Sue Hillis makes some beautiful designs, but holy, holy crap, her shading is no joke. <laughs> I think there were, I. I'm thinking there were one, two, three different shades in the mermaid's body alone, and there's another three or three shades in her tail fins, and so yeah, this was no joke. <laughs> All right. This is another bag from Garon's Totten Bags. Sorry, I'm upside down there. And I'm trying to remember if this was a bag of the month or I'm thinking it was a bag of the month because I have the grime guard that matches it. And then I'm pretty sure that Ronnie offered up some of these with a bag sale, and I grabbed us uh, the, the 9 by 13 Okay, so this was the second Garon Mystery Halloween box in 2021. Needle Bling Designs, Frank and Stitches. I also met Ter Teresa the owner and designer for Needle Bling Designs at StitchCon. So, Franken Stitches. This is also still in the Q-Snap. Um, I have gotten the Frank, the Bats, and the two Poodles. Princess Leia and Grace. No. Ah! Oh my God. I'm sorry, Gary and Ronnie. Yeah, I think it's Grace. Anyway, the poodles. <laughs> so, Franken stitches. This is the fabric. Uh, where's my thing? This was all in the this was all in the mystery box. Um Garon Green from Needle Bling Designs. And then it also came with the finishing kit from Lady Dot Creates to make him into a pin pillow. So some of these whips I've got quite a bit done on. Some of these whips, oh no, they need a lot of work. This was my birthday start, August of 2021. This was August bag of the month from Garon Totten Bags. Uh, Tula Pink. And for my birthday start, I started, 
Nope, sorry. Carolyn Manning's Peridot. Peridot is the birthstone for August. So I started Peridot. My work has been up here in these squares up top. Um, this is just your standard white Ada, 14 count. And this is where I've gotten to. The last time I worked on this was my birthday last year. Sorry, needle minder. Is, I can't remember if it's from Mad for Minders or Rebel Stitcher. But yes, Dean and Sam and Dean forever. So that's Carolyn Manning's Peridot. that this is a bag made by my best friend Kim she is a prolific quilter and she made this for me for Christmas last year so Grogu is one of my heroes and in here are these are my oldest whips I started working on these when my brother's girlfriend was pregnant with his son, my nephew, who is now 30. He's in his 30s. <laughs> He's in his 30s. So in here are one, two, three, four baby bibs that I have been working on. Um, I will sometime do, uh, I'll show some of my finishes. Um, is this one? Yes. This is one of them. And I will hold the, the chart back here so that you can't see it, but love. Um, and then I've already done this one, the train. And I still have charts and floss and the, the towels to make others. So I've decided to go ahead and do those. Um, there's nothing like a baby to give you religion. It's a baby. What did you expect after nine months of morning sickness, swollen ankles, crankiness, and stretch marks? Um, and there's one more here, I thought. Nope. Nope. Okay. Um, so I have a, a ton of these. And I know, you know, I, I, I'm thinking Sherry Colorado Cross Stitcher had recently posted in her floss tube, you know, look at something and if you don't think it's going to, it's not something you want to do, then don't do it. And I'm like, but I want to do these. I, I still want to do them. I have a lot of coworkers having babies, so I honestly, you know, I can still give them away. <clears throat> Sorry, one moment here. While I struggle with this zipper. Okay, we're not going to ride the struggle bus. This is um, a skunk, and it says, do you smell something? And the skunk is sniffing a flower. It's really cute. I'm going to have to do something about that one. Um, this one I haven't started yet. It's a caterpillar, and his body segments are all of these different colors. Um... 
And then this one is a bear with a pot of honey. Again, I don't have the cover photo. Um, let's see here. So it's a bear, pot of honey, and some butterflies. Okay. So, I have to fix that zipper. All right. And then how I've been stitching on these towels with their, it's a 14 count Ada insert, is my good old six by nine oval hoop. No, it's not a princess. It's not a queen. It's not a antique. It's certainly older, <laughs> but it's not an antique. All right. Okay. This one I was starting at StitchCon. It was part of the Stitch Along for Away We Ride by Blackbird Designs. I started up here in the corner didn't get very far. And yes, this is David Rose from Schitt's Creek. And that was my sad little start up in the corner. The fabric is Grandma Slip by x Designs. I listened to Gary and his advice on that. Um, yeah, let me verify that. Grandma Slip from x Design. Okay. The way we ride. This one is the third uh, project I took with me to Missouri in September of last year. This is my friend Rebecca or Becca Murphy at Sambury Stitches. She's a brilliant designer. And this was her very first design called the Adventure Sampler. She and her husband like to go on adventures a lot. She is a huge Bigfoot fan. She loves eagles and she loves owls. They go a lot up into the mountains. They see elk and bears. They like to stay in like cabins. Um, and then just the typical Pacific Northwest scenery. So I started over here. This is a bee skep with the bear and there's some bees. And I started when, then on Bigfoot. I worked on it quite a bit after I came back from, uh, from Missouri. Um, but I've kind of stalled out a little bit. I need to look and see. I think to me it feels like I've got something wrong somewhere with the bee. Certainly the... The bee is close to Bigfoot, but I'm looking to see if I can fudge it rather than frog it. So I promised a friend of mine that I would give her this, uh, her daughter. She had a baby last year and um, the baby's now a year old. And um, she did the nursery up in Pacific Northwest themes, Bigfoot especially. The fabric is 18 count Ada Fall by Be Stitch Me, and the silks are also by Be Stitch Me. So again, that's the Adventure Sampler from Sam Bree Stitches. You'll find her on Etsy. You'll also find her in several of your local needlework shops. If you don't see her there, ask your local needlework pro, uh, proprietor, and they will get her charts for you. She is also being distributed through Hoffman. Garon Totten Bags Bag. Garon Totten Bags Bag. This was Ronnie's fundraiser for cancer in 2021. Um, and when they did this bag, they also sold a chart. Also from Needle Bling Designs. <sighs> there it is. Courageous and strong. 
We don't know how strong we are until being strong is the only choice we have. And then all these different colored ribbons for cancer awareness. I started this at StitchCon because I wanted to um, do, I I'm also want to do the sampler that Pam chose for her survival cell, Courage. Praiseworthy Stitches, uh, Words of Wisdom, Courage. And this this um, ribbon right here is for testicular cancer. Teresa had designed this chart as a fundraiser for her brother while he was undergoing cancer treatment. And she told me at StitchCon that she had raised enough funds through this chart that they were able to cover family expenses while he was getting treatment. So I'm going to change that uh, ribbon to black because I am a melanoma survivor. I've also been working on this quite a bit since um, StitchCon. Wait a minute, did I? Yep, StitchCon. I've also been working on this quite a bit since StitchCon. I worked on it at Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit as well. Any stitchy meetups. So, and this fabric is Cosmo Fabric Ivory 16 Count. Cosmo fabric is the same as the Cosmo Floss. They're a Japanese company. Okay. And I'm using the called for overdides. Oh. I'm using my tissues. Okay. Another Garon Totten bags. And in here we have, okay, this is another old um, whip from back in the 90s, early, late 90s, early 2000s. This was a uh, big box kit. It's a Bible cover and bookmark. And it says, may God's peaceful and gentle ways uplift and guide you each of your days. And the bookmark says, may God bless you for all of your days. So I have got all the words done and the floral spray up top. I am so close to being done with it. I do not know why I dropped this. More than likely, my ADD kicked up, excuse me, kicked in. And I don't know. But it's, you know, and I haven't, excuse me. My chili's biting back. Um, and I haven't gotten the bookmark done yet. I just, I don't know why. I haven't done the, you know, I haven't finished it. And I should do it. I should just sit down and finish it up. A lot of my bags are not quite coordinated with the project inside. Um, I just grab whatever I've got available. One second, please. I'm going to take a good care. Okay, gear on cotton bags. And this is the project I picked up when I started in again with cross stitch in 2019. Dimensions kit, I can't adult today. This is me most days. And I had everything that came in the kit, the crispy Ada, the DMC -like, lookalikes, I have the wording done. I just need to do the floral sprays around it. A lot of people are like, oh, I need the challenge of multiple projects. For me, it's my ADD. Three stitches. Okay, I'm bored. I want to do something else. Why am I not done yet with this? Let's do something else. <laughs> this is another old whip. Another bo uh, big box store kit. Back in those days, that's all I did. And it's this little banner. Friends make life perfect. I am a center starter. Yep, <laughs> I even still have my DMC gold needle in there. Um, I am a center starter. So I'm sure you can see that oh so well, that white on white on white. 
again, this is little. It's not that big. And I've got, after all this time and all the moves across country, I still have the little hanger. I have all the parts and pieces. I just need to sit down and power through. And it's not that I don't want to. I want to stitch on these things. I want to. I don't know why. So, um, again, Garon Totten Bags, Bag of the Month, because I have the matching grind guard inside. Um, yep, there it is. So, all right. And then, this is another old whip. This one is, I don't, I, wait a minute. I've got a picture of it. I know I do. Yep, there it is. So this is the first time I used um, overdyes, and, or no, wait a minute. Excuse me. No, I lied. Forgive me. I'm using DMC. I had purchased the overdyes. Um... And it's Sweet Land of Liberty. I was stitching this for my best friend who loves chickens. Another friend who loves chickens. No way. Yes, way. Sorry, love. This one isn't for you. I know. Grumble, grumble. Sweet Land of Liberty by... This is 10 Count Betsy Ross Lamb's Wool. This is from the Counting Cottage in Kansas City. Sisters and Best Friends, Sweet Land of Liberty. And I know you're all like, come on, Jackie, come on. <laughs> this is one I'm going to definitely put on scroll rods. The, the weave of this fabric is so loose. I think you use all six strands. Um, but the weave of this fabric is so loose that it's, it's just really, I don't feel comfortable putting in a Q-snap and I don't think I want to put it in a hoop. So I'm going to put it on scroll rods. And I gave myself a Lowry stand for my birthday. So it's about damn time I put it together and put it to use. All right. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to jerk y'all. Okay. Did it on purpose? I did not. <laughs> this bag is from Jess at Como Stitches. C-O-M-O -O, Stitches. You'll find her on Etsy. She also has Instagram account under Como Stitches. Um, she makes the most awesome bags. Vinyl fronted or fully cloth bags. Um, this is... What? I attended a workshop last fall with Cecilia Turner of Heart and Hand Needle Art. And this is a specific um, chart for acorns and threads. I honestly don't know that they have it anymore. I don't know if this is available anymore. Um, but it goes along with her Tiny Town series, and it's thankful. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but on the front door of this little house here that has a wreath, that is an acorn. And then turkey bird. So... Um, I am not an even weave stitcher. I have done a couple of projects on even weave. I have cussed and gnashed teeth and the whole nine yards the entire time. I'm sitting there at, at the annex at Acorns and Threads and I'm stitching on this. And there's a lady across the table from me. She also is not a, an even weave linen stitcher. And she's like, we're looking at each other going, we got this, we got this, we got this. So this was all the further I have gotten on it. This was all in a kit. Overdyed's in a kit. The fabric is in a kit. Um, let me look and see if they actually say what the fabric is. I remember Cecilia talking about that she was putting together kits in the hotel room the night before. <laughs> Um, 32 count Heartland linen over two threads with two threads, classic color work, spec stitching. Yeah. So Heartland linen, 32 count from picture this plus. 
anyway. So, and every time I pick this up to take it somewhere, I'm like, no, you've got to concentrate. This is not one to take with you. <laughs> take with you to a retreat. You need to just leave it here at home and work on it at home. So, all right. And then I do have one other um, whip after this one. It literally is at the bottom of the stack of project, uh, kitted up projects over here. So I'll have to kind of slip it in somewhere, some way, somehow. But this is the final one of this this bunch for right now. Garon Totten Bags. I have friends who love Doxies. No, you cannot have this bag. It is mine. And you can... Yep, there's beads involved. You know, it's a Mirabilia Maze Emerald Fairy. Um, 2021... Garon, no, 2020, <sighs> fiddlesticks, 21, 22, 20, no, 2022 was the first year for designer of the month, designer focus from Garon Stitchery, and so this was the very first month, um, January was Mirabilia's, Nora Corbett, Beautiful Ladies, so Black Swan, Bella Filipina, Lavender and Lace, um, you know, any of your fancy ladies that you had. This is May's Emerald Fairy. I am using 16 count Ada and the called for DMCs and the flosses and the, <laughs> the beads, the crinic, the whole shebang. And those are the flosses. And this is my sad start. One length of floss, white floss. You probably you probably see it right like that. Yep. So that is my sad start on that. I have um, another whip. Um, also, that is the Dark Queen of the Seas. Um, I have gotten one line of thread in that in that one as well. I'm going to throw it into the rotation for this for the starts in 2024, the Dark Queen of the Seas and the Dark Queen of the Earth, because if they follow the pattern that they have been doing um, this September. September of 24, then the next Dark Queen will come out, whether it's air or fire. We don't yet know. Aaron and Cassandra are the ones who know that decision, and they'll be making that decision up. So um, I'm going to, sh I'll show them with my kitted up projects. But um, I would like to have at least one of my other two Dark Queens done before they start in on the next one. Um, Anywho, so that is it for the whip parade. Um, and I am going to, yep, we're right at an hour. So I am going to let you all go. Um, I'll be back later on, either later on this evening or tomorrow with um, part two, which is the kit parade. Um, and until then, keep on crafting, keep on creating, and keep on inspiring. Y'all have a wonderful night. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell to get notifications whenever I put up a video. I'm hoping that they'll be a lot more frequent than these have been this year. However, you never know. So until then, take care, be kind to each other. I love you all to pieces. Good night.